Hey everyone, Jado here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do an asset breakdown when working with a new concept. I'll be going over how I identify which assets need to be made, how I optimize my asset list before going into production, and generally how I make a large undertaking feel like a lot less work. Knowing how to do a breakdown is especially important if you're working with a client or studio that requires time estimates or quotes ahead of production, as it's the first step in creating a timeline, setting an appropriate deadline, and seeing how much a scene is going to cost your client. So I'm looking at this concept, and the first thing I want to do is break out the assets that seem to be the key focus of the scene. These are going to be our hero assets. And while you should give everything in your scene love and attention, these are the assets that need some extra pampering to bring out our environment's storytelling. In this particular concept by Mahmoud Benamur, whose portfolio I've linked in the description, our hero asset looks like it should be this frog-like statue and the cannon. This is because it's the key focus of this concept and feels like the central area that we'd be exploring if this was a level in a video game or a scene in a movie. I'm also going to add these other two giant statues to our hero asset list, just because they don't repeat in the scene, but also because they're really large and will likely require some more work than our other smaller assets. Next, I'm going to start breaking down our set dressing props, starting with the largest objects and working my way down to the smallest. For now, I'm going to ignore any plant life, such as trees, bushes, grasses, or vines, as I personally like putting foliage in its own category, but you could definitely include those here as well. What's important is that if it repeats, or if you could imagine it being used in many places throughout the environment, that you add it to this list. If you're doing this along with me, I'll give you a moment here to pause the video and see how many assets you can find. Okay, here are all the non-plant life assets that I found. Uh, how did you guys do? Let me know in the comments if you found all the ones on my list or if you caught any that I missed. Next, I'm going to break down the foliage. A pretty common thing you'll see in 2D concepts are these very uh, rough representations of forest and jungle areas where there's not a lot of definition to individual greenery. So what I like to do here is make a list of the most obvious plants, like this palm tree, this smaller tree. We'll need some kind of large fluffy tree for the jungle. And for each of these, I'll aim to make two or three variations in size and possibly a second color set as well, since I'm seeing some blue or greens and orange tones used in the concept. The middle area is pretty bare of plants aside from the grass, but I'm worried it's gonna feel a bit empty once the scene is in 3D. So I'm making the decision here to add two vines, three bushes, and a couple grass models to our list here. Next, we're going to start breaking down our textures and materials, which is where a lot of our scene optimization is going to come into play. A general rule of thumb with environment art for games is the fewer materials, the better. So while a lot of these assets are stylized and look like they should get hand-painted textures, it's important that we leverage tiling materials as well as texture and trim sheets. First, I'm going to make a list of any tiling materials I think I might need to make in Substance Designer. These are materials that we can quickly throw onto an object without having to worry about any hand-painted details. Uh, right away, I can see a rock material, a gold material, a grass material, and a dirt material for this path. Now I'm going to try and see if there's anything I could add to a trim sheet. A uh, trim sheet is a texture atlas that contains a few variations of repeating patterns that can be used on different assets throughout your scene. Some examples of patterns that could be used in a trim sheet from Mahmood's concept here could be the hieroglyphics on this column, or even these slabs of stone teeth that are used on the statue in the back. 
Lastly, I'm going to try and plan for my texture sheets by grouping similar assets together. This is where I'll try and UV sets of props onto as few image sheets as possible. If I'm using any textures with transparency, I try to fit as much as I can on these sheets especially to help keep the scene optimized, as alpha can quickly make a scene heavy, especially if you're building something dense like a jungle. The last thing I'd want to add to my breakdown list are any VFX I see in the scene that I might need to make, and the only one I can pick out in this concept is this bluish mist that's rising up at the background jungle, so we'll just go ahead and add that. Now that we've done a full breakdown, we can go through and see where we can reduce the number of assets we need even further. We can do this by making sure our assets have lots of variation from different angles. Can I reduce six rocks to three by having them look relatively different on the front versus the back? Can I have one pillar instead of four by having a different set of hieroglyphics or details on each side? These are important questions to be asking if you want to keep your scene optimized. And that's it. Now that you have a full breakdown of your scene, you can plan how long each part of your project is going to take and start building a timeline for yourself, as well as better estimate quotes for clients when it comes to freelance. I'd love to hear if this video helped you organize your project, or if there are more topics you'd like to see me cover in the future, leave a comment or you can tag me on Twitter at Jado. And lastly, if this video helped you in any way, please don't forget to like and subscribe to keep the content coming in the future. Thanks everybody, see you next time.